Hey everybody, welcome to Cincinnati Real Producers Podcast, powered by Nextdoor Photos. I'm Patrick Braddock, owner and publisher of Cincinnati Real Producers. And I'm Daniel Ziegler, owner of Nextdoor Photos. Every week, we're getting to know Cincinnati's top realtors. Our goal is to elevate and inspire the real estate community throughout greater Cincinnati. Today we have Dee Dee Aulis with Plum Tree Realty. Dee Dee is in her 17th year selling real estate, and her career sales volume is over $160 million, closing over 770 transactions. In 2023 alone, her volume was over $14 million. In 2018, Dee Dee was honored as the number three REMAX agent in the state of Ohio, and in 2022 she was the number one agent with Plum Tree Realty nationwide. She was also a recipient of the Circle of Excellence Award at the Realtor Alliance of Greater Cincinnati. Welcome to the show, Dee Dee Aulis. Hey, Dee Dee. Hi, guys. Thank you so much. Well, this is going to be an interesting conversation, Daniel. It's probably a good <laughs> thing you're between us, to be quite honest. <laughs> it's, uh, I've known Dee Dee for a very long time. Thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's an you, honor. You are awesome. And... Um, this will be interesting. I'm excited to get in. I'm, I'm excited to dig in. We just in don't know you. where it's going to go. I know. I it's, mean. It's going to be wild. We don't even know. Oh, man. So I'm going to let Daniel run with it in the beginning because okay. he really wants to get to know you as well. And I'll uh, I'll go off on tangents if I start, if I if I lead us off. So okay. <laughs> go for it, buddy. Yeah. I mean, let's let's hear your story, Didi. So let's take us back, um, you know, before you, the 17 awesome years in real estate, what were you doing before then? How did let's just kind of walk through that journey of getting into real estate and then the yeah, it to where seems you are now. like forever ago. Um, but I had various jobs. You know, we were young, we were married, we had kids, we were trying to make ends meet. Um, my last job was um, a dental receptionist, and um, it was part time work, so I could you know be home with the kids, get the girls off the bus and stuff. And I had had my third child and I was really looking for something with more of a flexible schedule. And um, I spent a lot of time in prayer and I really heard um, the Lord say to me that he wanted me to be a vessel that would go into homes and be willing to pray for people. Hmm. And so with that, that's when I entered into Hondros and went to real estate school um, at the bottom of the market in 2007. Um, and I worked both jobs for probably two and a half, three years. And then I quit the, um, dental job and went full time in real estate. The one, one, 2010. Okay. Nice. Yes. Did people think you were crazy when you enrolled in, in school? Nobody thought I, they, I was crazier than I did myself. You (laughs) know, I remember looking at the TV and everything was like the real estate market crashes. It's tanking. And I'm like, what? am I doing? You know, like, right. what was I thinking? Why am I the only person in this class right now? <laughs> I, I said to my husband, I was like, if I get there and nobody's there, I'm turning around and leaving. But the class was full, so I really? stayed. <laughs> interesting. That is interesting. Yes. It would be interesting to see who from that class is I'm glad successful. you asked because I am actually friends with two of the people, really? two realtors that I graduated with. One's licensed in Indiana, and she gives me all her referrals for Hamilton, Ohio, because that's where she was from. And the other one is, she's been licensed for quite a while, um, and I just reconnected with her a year ago. So it's really fun Hmm. to remember what we went through and all the crazy things and maybe how many times we had to take the test before we passed. Sure, (laughs) sure. um, But yeah, I don't know. Of the rest of the class, I, I would say there were probably... Um, 30 or 50 people wow. in that class with me. And then we had to attend in person. Mm-hmm. Now you can do your class Everything's, online. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I am shocked that there were so many. I know. At that time. Mm-hmm. That is, that is super wild. So family, three kids. Yes. Two girls, boy. Yes. Uh, we, we actually only have people on the podcast if they have three kids. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, here's we a side note. Yes. Dee Dee's got like 4,000 dogs. <laughs> so. Four fur babies. Let's not forget them. So yeah, I have um, my oldest daughter, Sydney. She's 26 and um, she graduated from Miami. She's a teacher. That's awesome. And my second daughter, the pitiful middle child, right? 
Um, she's 23, and she graduated from Miami, and she's a nurse. Nice. And um, then Cooper is 17. He's a junior at Baden, and um, he's living his best life. That's awesome. He's, and I have never loved any person in the world more than I do that child. Um, mm. Sorry, he, Sydney. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, girls. Sorry, and girls. They know it. They know it. Man. <laughs> um, but, I mean, yeah, he's. Um, it's fun because, you know, if I had things my way, I would have had three daughters all within five years. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And, but we couldn't get pregnant again for a long time. And then we had kind of the oops Mm -hmm. and Cooper was born. So the girls were six and eight when he was born. And the best thing about the age gap, and I bet there's going to be a lot of moms who are listening or understand, I got to do it all again a second Mm -hmm. time. So Santa tooth fairies, Easter egg hunts. When the girls were getting too big and I was emotional and losing all my marbles because I didn't want to let go, here came my baby boy and I got to do it all again. So I got those memories twice, you know. Hmm. We've been married. My husband and I have been married. Um, May will be... 29 or 30 years. Don't mess it up. I feel like I I, I couldn't do the math in my (laughs) head that fast. Um, 29 this year, 30 next year, I think. Um, High school sweethearts, we were dating when I was 16. Um, And the funny thing is, is I'm still only 27. So I don't know how all that happened. It's just beautiful. Just just beautiful. (laughs) Yeah. So high school sweethearts, we've been married 29 years, three kids. Um, pretty much native of Hamilton and Fairfield, Butler County. Mm-hmm. Um, That's where the majority of your business is, correct? Correct. Okay. I'd like to say I'm the Butler County queen or, there you, go. you know, self-elected, if, if nothing <laughs> yeah. less. Yeah. Hey, claim it. My yeah. husband told me, based on one voter, my husband. <laughs> I have got one follower. Yeah, yeah. His name is Mike. <laughs> hilarious yeah so that's my personal story oh well can we else just mention the four dogs yes let's right? talk yeah. about the dogs um four fur dogs how do you get babies. your family to agree to four dogs by the way? it just kind of escalated it was out of control <laughs> they it really was like an addiction yeah. i couldn't stop um we got tater tater tot he's <laughs> oh, the og it. um he's five um, all mini golden doodles, all mini golden doodles, except for the fourth one. And we'll get to his story. Um, but there's Tater Tot and then there's Tucker Lee and they are brothers, same mom and dad, one litter apart. Oh, really? And they were perfect animals. I mean that they were just, they were so good. We kept getting more. Mm-hmm. And then we bought a house in Florida and I would go there a lot, you know, sometimes by myself And it's a quick, easy flight on Allegiant for like an hour and a half, and boom, you're there. And I said to my husband, I need a little dog I can travel with. So then we got Turner, Mm. Turner Rip. He is kind of a dwarf. Um, He's a a toy doodle. So he fits into like a cat carrier. And I can put him. Carry on size. He is a carry on (laughs) size. (laughs) And so I can travel with him. And that's why we got Turner, right? We were like, so now I've got one to take to Florida. We have two mini golden doodles. They were perfect. And then um, I came across the opportunity to rescue a dog. Um, And I couldn't say no. It was my cousin. They couldn't handle him. They had a lot of things going on in their life. And um, he was chocolate brown. And I mean, I was in love with him. And But his name was Bear. And he was one year old when I got him. And I said... I can't keep him if his name is Bear. You know, he's got a fit, Tater, Tucker, Turner. Mm -hmm. So then we named him Tanner. And um, he's a Portuguese water dog. So he kind of looks like a doodle. Hmm. Um, He's got the fluffy curly hair. But we tell everyone that he identifies as a doodle. Mm. So I have four doodles. The Alice Dudes, (laughs) D-O-O-D-S. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, so now that my kids are all grown and gone, I get to be a fur mom. Um, and living in Ohio with all the rain we've had, mm-hmm. counting all the paws I have to wipe down multiple times a day has literally made me crazy. Do you have time for anything else? Zero. Nothing <laughs> else. Nothing say. else. Goodness. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. So um, that's me. That's well, awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Well, let's talk through your journey 
in real estate then. So you okay. got you got started at the bottom. Yeah. And now we're here. And now yeah. <laughs> um started um with Remax. Um enjoyed Remax, had built some of the most amazing relationships and was um honored to be like lifetime achievement awards, um Hall of Fame. I had so many milestones and learned a lot during that process. Um built my brand, my reputation, um, and never, ever wanted to leave Remax. We enjoyed going to Las Vegas for all the R4 conferences. Gosh, we've had fun. Um, and then I felt like things were changing mm -hmm. and it was time to, um, focus more on savings and, you know, lower fees. And I made the change about three years ago almost to Plumtree. Wow. Um, and it's more of a no brick and mortar kind mm -hmm. of cloud brokerage. Um, very simple, easy concept. Um, very happy and proud to be among the Plumtree family. Um, it's very small and very intimate. And I think that there's a lot to you know be said about that. Um, in 2007, when I got started, um, you know, it was a tough market. Everything was foreclosed. Everything was a dump. Everything was a short sale. Like it was the hardest market to learn in. Yeah. And I watched it turn and I watched it grow. And then you fast forward to COVID, you know, that mm -hmm. was quite challenging. Um, getting through, you know, that process, you know, the shutdown, the quarantine and being labeled essential. So thank God we could still sell. Mm -hmm. Um and then, you know, we had that incredible market where nobody has ever even seen anything like that. I don't, has it no. even ever happened in, in the it's history the, of real it's estate? It's hundred year, man. Like, yeah. it's, Is that what it is? I don't know. I, I, I attribute it to like sure. the, 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 the flu in the early 1900s. And it's like a hundred years later, you have COVID and that drives the economy to lower interest rates and you know, help, help people, you know, who, who need to move, not just want to move. And that was the, I think the perfect storm because everybody was locked in their house, realized mm -hmm. what they didn't want or like, or what they needed in their home. Right. And then you had all the employers who were offering these flexible work from home opportunities. So people were like, let's go, let's go. And, you know, open the floodgates. And that right. to me is definitely going to be once in our lifetime experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'll ever, we're never going to see that. Never again. see that again. But that's why the market's so tough right now too. Yes. Is people are? I think it was at one point I read like ninety nine percent of this area had refinanced less than three and a half percent or something like that or four wow. percent. Wow. So, <laughs> you know, when when that's the hard to give up. when the interest <laughs> rates go to seven and a half or eight percent, what's like, the incentive? Right. There's nothing. You know, it has unless to there, be unless a, there's a life cha life changing event. Right. You know? Exactly, like, Pat. But I, um, you know, that it's it's really interesting to see top agents and successful real estate agents just stay the course, mm -hmm. you know, rely on their services, that's rely right. on that. And, you know, and I think that's brings me back to Plumtree. Like Plumtree, has, there's a misconception about this brokerage because it's not a discount brokerage. Not it's even, not right. anything close. It's, it's a great avenue for real estate agents who want more financial freedom. Yes. And that's, that's where he I is, think Chris has really built the brand. He can be so comfortable the brand. Yeah. when it comes to the tech and everything that he offers. Like, I'm not lacking anything. Right. Um, I remember when I interviewed. So when I had made the decision that I was going to start exploring more options, um, I interviewed with three brokerages and was trying to choose which direction I wanted to go. And um, I remember Chris said when I was meeting with Chris, he was like, he goes, you should have seen me trying to convince people, you know, 10 years ago, leave, leave Remax and come and work with me and go door to door. You yeah. know, he was like, it was hard then, yeah. but because he stayed the course and he fought for what he believed in, you know, he's also reaping those benefits now, sure. which is mm -hmm. such an amazing blessing, I think, to be a part of. Um, they have recruited over a hundred agents this year alone. I was I think, gonna say it's probably think, his best recruiting year ever. Ever. Yeah. yeah. Like he's they're just exploding right now. I, I would like to think that I as an influencer 
opened that yeah. doorway for him. I don't think there's any other. <laughs> we're, in, we're actually interviewing Chris yeah, later. We'll, we'll ask him next. And week. We'll I'm sure that's, that's probably that's probably going to be in his intro. Like, thank you, God, for Dee Dee. Thank right? you, Jesus. So, yes, yeah, it better be. Yeah. If it's not, you cancel him. But I think well, I'll put it in there. For and you. we've talked about this. We've been friends for a long time. The the um part of the allure to Chris and Plumtree was was the fact that you had you know you you could work in Florida and you get your license exactly you didn't have to move brokerages mm-hmm. like he's throughout the country um, and he's continuing to grow in states throughout the country yes so I think that was I, I remember talking to you about that um, for if there is or when there is a transition to a little bit more business in Florida. If you mm-hmm. want to talk about that, like kind of your goals or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the biggest decisions. Thank you for reminding me of that. But yeah. um, if I did get licensed in Florida and he was already brokered there, I still just pay the 275 a month. Right. I didn't even have to pay an additional fee. Right. And I got the benefit of all the states that he was in. Um, so Florida kind of went on hold a little bit once things started changing, I think, across, you know, the real estate industry nationally, um, the inflation and those sorts of things, but things on hold. And plus, I became a mother of a bride this year. Congratulations. And thank you. That's thank awesome. you. I get to be, um, have my first wedding um, in September. Ask me where. Well, if that, probably Florida. Exactly. And I was going to say, if that doesn't put the blinders on you, I don't know what does. But So they're going to do a beach wedding in mm. Florida. And, you know, we just put the, the whole Florida ball on hold a little bit because I also didn't want to miss out on my only begotten son's high school athletic, yeah. you know, yeah. um, events and memories. Um, so it just, it was super important for a minute. And then just like that. Hmm. I was like, okay, maybe another day, a different, it's okay, yeah. different time. Yeah, it doesn't have to happen right now. But right. That's that's the fact that you have the option is is what's most right. important and part of the deciding factor. So that's smart. I yeah. mean, that's fine. Yeah. So. And I just remember when we first met. I mean, how inst. I mean, golly, we were younger, thinner. Yeah. I mean, we had a lot of different I was, uses, I was cool. and um, I was such an. I was. I was on your magazine with the first year, right? Yeah, I think One so. One of the first ones. I think you were, what were you, November of 2018? It, if you can remember like that, that, that would blow my mind. Yes. It's November or December. It's I don't think it was. I was thinking there. October. Maybe October. But Just my because first, I remember my My first outfit. issue was July of 2018. And I remember like when we, we, had, a, we had this conversation and um, when I started, it was hard for me to reach out to the top agents and and – have conversations with him just because of his it was intimidating you mm. know like it was like oh man they're gonna hate me they're gonna hate me they're gonna be like what are you talking about you don't even have a magazine yet it's just you're just talking about air you know and um you sit down with the the few agents that are nice enough to um to have that conversation with you and Didi was one of them and we start talking and i'm like man this is so motivating and then she calls me she's like I just want you to know I just got done crying. She's like, I'm just so happy that we met and all this. And I'm like, okay. Like, and I'm like instant, She's a basket case instant, is what he's well, saying. Well, no, instantaneously, I was like, man, we're going to be friends forever. forever. I, just, I just know it. And, yeah. And and it's been true. Like, we've been, you know, we've, we've stayed in contact. We grab lunch. We grab coffee when we can. And um, but just kind of catch else, up on each like other's just lives. Just to even toot your own horn. And it's one of the things I think that you pride yourself on. But it's the ability to connect people and put people together. Like I would say something to you in casual conversation and then you'd be like, you need to meet so-and-so. I'm going to introduce you to this person. So you take networking and matchmaking to another level. I appreciate that. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I very much appreciate it. That's what we've been trying to Mm -hmm. drive this whole time. And that's why we've been around for six years in Cincinnati. But like it's also it's a two-stage platform for, for when I tell people like it's, you know, I can I can lead a horse to water, right? Right. You can't make a horse drink, and you know I can sit there and say, "Hey, Daniel, here's Dee Dee, Dee Dee, Daniel." You know, but what are you going to do, Daniel, to drive a conversation with her or drive a relationship? Yeah, yeah. Because my goal when I make those introductions is not to drive business. Right. It's to grow a relationship. It's a connection. Exactly, and it's, it's a like connection. nobody works with people they don't know, like, and trust. And I don't know why we're talking about me when this is supposed to be all about you. I did a little like, switcheroo. Yeah, you really did. But I appreciate the plug very, very much. I um but that's what the people who do well with our program are referral based people. Mm-hmm. You know, they understand that 
growing relationships is not easy. I think that your people are the people with the truest intentions. Thank you. Yeah. And and it's the fact that we only we only reach the top agents in the market that our service standards are uh, you know above everybody else's. They're not interested in just getting to a closing table and right. making a paycheck. Right. They want to help people, you know, in some of the biggest decisions. Of I their don't lives. even feel like I belong in that circle. You know, like I don't think of myself as being a top agent or in an elite group of any way, because to me, I have broken it down and it's strictly about the relationships. Yeah. And when people try to, you know, make it about getting paid or, you know, making the awards, that's not what I was called to do. That's not who I am. It mm-hmm. is building those relationships and I want them to last a lifetime. I don't want people to think that they could ever meet anybody that would love somebody more or take better care of them than I can. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, the secret, if there's a secret sauce, just know how to build a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not rocket science. Yeah. Yeah. Caring, caring is, is important. And I think once people get into real estate and they recognize that they're good at it, it becomes fun and it's enjoyable. And it's like, okay, yes, I am building these relationships, but I'm also pretty darn good at it, you know? So it's like real estate agents, I, I, I love the fact that, you know, you're humble in, in who you are and the person that you are. But I also think, you know, when you're good at something, that's okay. Like you're allowed to be good at sales in real estate. That's, that's great. Like people want to be good at what they're doing, you know? So, um, and I'm I'm not saying everybody comes out and toots their own horns or anything like that, but like, but it's, it's fulfilling, you know? Well, and even this morning, like when I was getting ready and I was thinking about everything and trying to prepare, you know, and, and I was even in prayer, right? Because that's who I am. And I was just thinking of some of the names of people that you've interviewed or that you've had on your cover. And I'm like, I don't even belong there. You know, like why Mm -hmm. is this small town girl from Hamilton, you know, a part of this special platform and to be here is an honor and I don't take that for granted but I still can't believe it's like pinch me yeah. like why me you know it doesn't even seem real sometimes and I don't take it for granted because yeah. it's an honor and some people I don't think appreciate the gravity when you look back over your life and you say I was graced to be on the cover or I was invited to be in a podcast. I mean, or I closed 700 plus transactions, you know, like think about that. Like that's something. Is that all though? Are we sure those numbers are right? (laughs) Joking. You gave them to us. (laughs) So yeah, Um, no, but that's, I I don't know. Like, what do you, what do you kind of see yourself doing? Cause I know you're, we, we talked about this pre production that you're, you know, you're kind of in a little transition with the family, you know, your daughter's getting married, your son's finishing high school. It's really important for you to be connected with that. And, um, you know, your business is fine, but like, where do you see yourself going? Like the, the five-year plan is an important question to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. This could be a really big question for you yeah. because in five years, your life is, I mean, not to be the guy to say this, it's going to be completely different. Yeah. Your son will be in college or Are off doing whatever you doing. No, but I'm just curious. Is this one of those shows you cry I'll on? I'll just stop and say, what's your five-year plan? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, my five-year plan is um, I look forward to grandchildren. Okay. Um, I look forward to staying in the relationships with the people that I've serviced. Um, I'm okay if it's less. Um, I enjoy the downtime, you know, I'm not so young anymore that I feel like I have to put in 18 hours a day. Sure. Um, I'm looking forward to new ventures, um, little side hustles or, you know, maybe part-time real estate in Florida. Um, currently, um, one of the greatest kept secrets and biggest blessings that is happening um, are that me and my two daughters are all living right next to each other. Really? That's cool. And so with the wedding, and I know that they want to have grandkids really soon, um, I'm excited to just be back in their life and celebrate my young adult children. What does the fiancé think of that? He loves us so much, Sweet. he can't stand it. I'm sure that's the case. Like, Lindsay <laughs> was like, 
Dad and Aaron, we have to have some boundaries because those two are peas in a pod. That's awesome. I mean, so, of course, Aaron loves his soon-to-be mother-in-law. Yeah. Um, so, Lindsay will be out my front window and Sydney will be out my back window. We literally have gates that connect our backyards. No kidding. I wow. promise. I promise. So, that... And that's just going down tomorrow. Is was that just days. was that was that planned or was that just like wow? This it is... was all God. Wow, that's hmm. pretty cool. So said we bought Sydney's house after she graduated college um, three years ago, and um, we bought it from my aunt. And um, then the house behind Sydney that I bought um, was the house that was the babysitter for my kids when they were little. Oh wow! So I reached out to Krista and said, Hey, now that Sydney lives back there. You know, if you ever want to sell, hit me up. We want to buy it. There's only one house that has my daughter in the backyard, and I'll take it. You know, I want it. And she's like, yeah, we want to do that right now. And I was like, uh, wait, hold on. You know, regroup. <laughs> Can we wait till after the wedding? Can we wait a couple yeah. years? Yeah. But no. So we bought the house, and, you know, wow. we toyed with renting it or didn't know what we were going to do. So we decided to make the move. And um, that was six months ago. Walk out the front door one day, look across the street. There's a moving truck, Daniel. Mm. I do what every realtor does. Goes Hello. up. Hey, I'm a realtor. And um, I was like, no, but seriously, I would probably be interested in buying this house for my dad. And I said, can I give you my card? He goes, I'll give it to my mom. She called me and the rest is history. That's awesome. So if I hadn't bought the house for Sydney three years ago, or moved into the house behind Sydney six months ago, we wouldn't have known that there would have been an opportunity for Lindsay hmm. to live on the same street as me. Hmm. Wow. So pretty excited for that. That's, awesome. That's cool. Yeah, we're going to have a fun summer. That's really fun. We're going to have like a fun it. summer. When you said that, I assumed you were building some kind of family compound or something. Sort of. Yeah, it's a right. cul-de-sac, right. but so it will be a compound. Just take over eventually, slowly. <laughs> yeah. infiltrate I'm going to choose the neighbors. I got one for my dad. I'm going to get one for Coop. Oh, man. <laughs> That is cool. Yeah. That's really fun. So five, so five years, So right? the five-year plan is... All is compound. The compound. What about your real estate business? What do you want to do with that? Um, I'd like to just see it... Um, I mean, I'd like to see it improve more. You know, it's definitely suffered some the last couple years. Um, but kind of like I said before, I don't want those long, long days and hours anymore. So, mm -hmm. you know, I want just... I wanted my I want my circle to be small and tight. Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'd love to ask you some advice that you might offer yeah. for buyers and sellers and and maybe some new agents that are getting into the business. But before we do that, we always like to thank Back to Back Ministries for letting us use this podcast studio. Um, Back to Back Ministries is a global nonprofit orphan care organization with their sights set on providing care for today and hope for every tomorrow. From Cincinnati, Ohio to Hyderabad, India, staff teams around the world are stepping into hard stories and choosing to stay. To learn more about the work Back to Back does, how you can get involved, and why a global team won't stop until every child is known and loved, visit backtoback.org today. I love that. I think that Back to Back is a beautiful organization. I have often supported it. Um, I have friends that are sponsors here as well. Um, and one of the things that doesn't change about me, and I know that um, it's kind of part of who I've been in my business is what I give back to. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a mission trip in 2017 to Haiti, um, and um, that became an important part of my existence mm -hmm. here in um, America. And so I have um, a, tr a store. Um, it's a nonprofit store in Hamilton called Made to Love that I've often volunteered at, and all the goods that are sold at Made to Love are handmade by Haitians. Oh, and awesome. so that opportunity gives them jobs and mm -hmm. employment. And then when you shop there, it's kind of like a, a and it's the gift that gives back, right? right? When you shop there, they also pay to send kids to Christian schools in Haiti mm -hmm. so wow. that they can start to change some of the evilness and the destruction that's They've in the country. They've been through a lot in that country. Yes. Yeah, it's terrible. And it's really, really bad right now. So. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, um, there's another great um, nonprofit company that I've often supported, 
and it is called Homes for Homes. And so every time there's a donation made, and I would do it with my closings, we would build a house in a third world country. Hmm. And so I often did that. Um, and I think that giving back is critical um, to separate yourself and figure out kind of what your purpose is and mm-hmm. what your why is. Um, so for me, I believe when the Bible says to those who much is given, much is required. I require a lot of myself personally. And um, so I, I give and give and give and give. Um, and I don't think that you can stop giving. And when you have an organization like Back to Back, you know, they're actually world changers. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's imperative um, to be the change you want to see. That's Absolutely. Awesome. Great. That. Great plug for Back to Back. That's Seriously. our best one yet. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Yeah, we have to check out uh, <laughs> yeah. Made to Love, too. I love that. Yeah. So Made to Love is very, very special. And um, financially, things have been, you know, tough on them with all the e-commerce. And, mm. you know, so um, we've been praying for, you know, what their future looks like. And can they take, you know, a brick and mortar and turn it into an online store and yeah, how sure. to manage that. Um, but it is, um, I think, one of the greatest ways to be able to um, show your worth in America when you can support. And like for me, single moms, give me a single mom. I'm taking care of her, right? She's like, that's my truest compassion and heart for buyers, first time mm-hmm. home buyers, single moms. I'm going to bend over backwards and you know, I'm buying bedding for those kids when they move into that mm-hmm. house yeah. because it's, better to give than to receive and there's a point in your life when you realize i don't need somebody to buy me a dinner let me you know pay for an officer's meal or you know let me you know help build a house in a third world country that's just those are unparalleled Mm -hmm. gifts that you can give back to Um, but made to love is fabulous so if you haven't ever looked them up or you don't know them check them out yes absolutely yeah well, do you have some advice that you'd like to offer for, and this could be oh, for... Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Oh, well, good. <laughs> First of all, buy all the houses around you. <laughs> Move your buy family Buy every house in. on your street. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that if I was um, addressing buyers and sellers, my first recommendation would be um, interview your realtors, hmm. right? I mean, my people have to use me. They're committed to right. only me. Forever, but if you don't, don't have a working realtor in yeah. your life... <laughs> Interview your realtors because you want to make sure that you line up, you know, Mm -hmm. spiritually, socially, professionally, in all the ways. Um, And I always tell my buyers to interview their loan officers, Mm -hmm. right? I'm always saying, here's two, three, four people. Which one do you like the best? I trust all of these people, but I want you to choose the one that's going to be the best fit for your family because that is going to be the most brutal, gruesome process of Mm -hmm. our transaction. So you better line up with them. Um, So interview your realtors, interview your loan officers. And I kind of pride myself on my reviews. Um, I currently probably have, I don't know, maybe 300 five-star reviews on Google. And I work hard for those. Mm -hmm. And when I'm going into like a listing presentation and maybe I know that they're interviewing and I'm competing, I always say, check your realtor's reviews Hmm. because do they have a one-star review? You Hmm. might want to rethink that. I don't have a one-star review and I don't have just 10 five-star reviews. It's not just my cousins voting for (laughs) me, you know, but these are actual past clients. And so, um, you know, look at the Facebook reviews. I think combined, I probably have like 700 Wow. On all the platforms, 700 five-star reviews That's awesome. over 17 years. And I've worked hard for that. But I also know that I wouldn't have that if it hadn't been for all the blessings that God gives me. He pours out favor on me. And so I'm able to show that in my reviews because when you look, you're going to see that Dee Dee is who she says she is because those clients are saying she prayed with me. You know, she showed Jesus through her work. And so that's what I want real estate to be. It's my Mm -hmm. ministry. Um, So back to my advice, I'm Ray and Blaine. Interview your realtors, your loan officers, check your, your, both of those professionals reviews, right? Mm -hmm. Um, 
and um, your buyer's agent should be doing a buyer's consult. I sit down with my buyers. I meet them. I teach them. I show them the things that they need to learn to expect so that when we get under contract, I'm in control. They trust me. They're not surprised. Things don't go crazy haywire. Um, and I think that that buyer's consult makes everything like um, a smooth sale, mm -hmm. right? It right. gives you an idea of what to expect, yeah, especially for first-time home buyers. It's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. That is great advice. Yes. That's, That's awesome. what I'd probably say. Buy yeah, all the houses on your street. Right. Yeah. Step one. Step one. Call Dee Dee Allis. Well, that's really step one. Never look past the dog. Just buy them. <laughs> oh, Make sure they fit in a bag to go to Florida. <laughs> Travel size. So, Travel so, size. So, yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you, Dee Dee, for being a part of our podcast. We, It's been a while since we last spoke, so I'm glad that everything's going well with the family and, and your, your health and everybody's doing great. Like, that's... It's important to me to to know that you're you you guys are all doing well and congratulations on the bride to be. Thank you, thank What's, you, thank you. You said September. September. That'll be mm. fun. Yes. It's gonna be an emotional summer for you. Golly, can I can't even count the tears already. It's gonna be great. Yes. So Love well, it. thank you for being a part of this. Thanks, guys. Continued success in the business, and uh, we're excited to see where the next few years take you. Pat, yeah. it was great to see you again. Daniel, Absolutely. very nice to meet you. You as well. I appreciate Absolutely. both of you from it's the bottom fun. of my heart. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for listening to the Cincinnati Real Producers podcast powered by Nextdoor Photos. We do this every week, so be sure to subscribe so you can follow along. If you liked our conversation, leave us a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts.